The hairy ball theorem of algebraic topology states that there is no non-vanishing continuous tangent vector field on even dimensional n spheres. For the ordinary sphere, or to a Euro sphere, if f is a continuous function that assigns a vector in a 3 to every point p on a sphere such that f, p, is always tangent to the sphere at p, then there is at least one p such that f, p, equals zero. In other words, whenever one attempts to comb a hairy ball flat, there will always be at least one tuft of hair at one point on the ball. The theorem was first stated by Henri Poincaré copyright in the late 19th century. This is famously stated as you can't comb a hairy ball flat without creating a cowlick, you can't comb the hair on a coconut, or sometimes every cow must have at least one cowlick. It can also be written as, every smooth vector field on a sphere has a singular point. It was first proved in 1912 by Brewer. Counting zeros, from a more advanced point of view, every zero of a vector field has an index and it can be shown that the sum of all of the indices at all of the zeros must be 2. Therefore, there must be at least one zero. This is a consequence of the Poincaré v. Eurohop theorem. In the case of the torus, the Euler characteristic is zero. And it is possible to comb a hairy donut flat. In this regard, it follows that for any compact regular two-dimensional manifold with non-zero Euler characteristic, any continuous tangent vector field has at least one zero. Cyclone consequences, a curious meteorological application of this theorem involves considering the wind as a vector defined at every point continuously over the surface of a planet with an atmosphere. As an idealization, take wind to be a two-dimensional vector, suppose that relative to the planetary diameter of the Earth, its vertical motion is negligible. One scenario, in which there is absolutely no wind, corresponds to a field of zero vectors. This scenario is uninteresting from the point of view of this theorem, and physically unrealistic. In the case where there is at least some wind, the hairy ball theorem dictates that at all times there must be at least one point on a planet with no wind at all and therefore a tuft. This corresponds to the above statement that there will always be p such that f, p, equals zero. In a physical sense, this zero wind point will be the eye of a cyclone or anticyclone. In brief, then, the hairy ball theorem dictates that, given at least some wind on Earth, there must at all times be a cyclone somewhere. Note that the eye can be arbitrarily large or small and the magnitude of the wind surrounding it is irrelevant. This is not strictly true as the air above the Earth has multiple layers, but for each layer there must be a point with zero horizontal wind speed. Application to computer graphics, a common problem in computer graphics is to generate a non-zero vector in a 3 that is orthogonal to a given non-zero one. There is no single continuous function that can do this for all non-zero vector inputs. This is a corollary of the hairy ball theorem. To see this, consider the given vector as the radius of a sphere and note that finding a non-zero vector orthogonal to the given one is equivalent to finding a non-zero vector that is tangent to the surface of that sphere where it touches the radius. However, the hairy ball theorem says there exists no continuous function that can do this for every point on the sphere. Lefskut's connection, there is a closely related argument from algebraic topology, using the Lefskut's fixed point theorem. Since the Betty numbers of a two-sphere are 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, the Lefskut's number of the identity mapping is 2. By integrating a vector field we get a one-parameter group of diffeomorphisms on the sphere. And all of the mappings in it are homotopic to the identity. Therefore, they all have Lefskut's number 2, also. Hence they have fixed points. Some more work would be needed to show that this implies there must actually be a zero of the vector field. It does suggest the correct statement of the more general Poincaré copyright Hopf index theorem. Corollary, a consequence of the hairy ball theorem is that any continuous function that maps an even dimensional sphere into itself is either a fixed point or a point that maps onto its own antipodal point. This can be seen by transforming the function into a tangential vector field as follows. Let S be the function mapping the sphere to itself, and let V be the tangential vector function to be constructed. For each point P, construct the stereographic projection of S, 
p, with p as the point of tangency. Then b, p, is the displacement vector of this projected point relative to p. According to the hairy ball theorem, there is a p such that b, p, equals zero, so that s, p, equals p. This argument breaks down only if there exists a point p for which s, p, is the antipodal point of p, since such a point is the only one that cannot be stereographically projected onto the tangent plane of p. Higher dimensions, the connection with the Euler characteristic I suggests the correct generalization, the 2n sphere has no non-vanishing vector field for n a per mil 1 n. The difference between even and odd dimensions is that, because the only non-zero Betty numbers of the m sphere are b o and b m, their alternating sum i is 2 for m even, and 0 for m odd. See also, vector fields on spheres. Notes. References. Eisenberg, Murray. Guy, Robert. A Proof of the Hairy Ball Theorem. The American Mathematical Monthly 86, 571 Euro 574-doi, 10.2307-2320587. Further reading, Tyler Jarvis and James Tanton. The Hairy Ball Theorem by S. Berners Lemma. Richardson, David S. Euler's Gem, The Polyhedron Formula and the Birth of Topology. Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-12677-1. See Chapter 19, Combing the Hair on a Coconut, pages 200-218. Reich, Henry. One Minute Math. Why You Can't Comb a Hairy Ball. New Centers TV.